Hey everyone, it's Melanie Ham. Welcome back to my channel. Today's video, I'm going to show you how we're going to trim our first quilt that we made. We are getting into the home stretch. I'm going to go over the tools that you need and sort of the things to keep in mind when you are trimming all of the extra stuff off of your first quilt and then how to prepare and measure for your binding. Okay, so as always, make sure you check the first link down below the video. We'll have the blog post with everything written out if you need to refer to it later. As you're making these, let me know how it's going. Tag me on social media, all that good stuff. So let's jump in. Now, the first thing that I recommend, and since we didn't do any cutting with this quilt, you may not have this ruler yet. This is my recommendation for the first ruler to buy when you are learning how to quilt. So if you do, don't have one of these already, grab one of them. I'll have links down below. You can get them on Amazon. They're not very expensive. This is the first one that I ever bought. I have stickers on here from when I go to sewing groups and stuff so I know which one is mine. Um, mine is seen better days. It's kind of cracked up here. I actually got this one. My mom got me this one as a present. This is the Creative Grids version. This one is more expensive. It's a little thicker, a little sturdier. So either one is fine. And both of these are six by 24. So this is the first ruler that I recommend. And I'm gonna show you how to do everything that we're gonna need to do from now on using this ruler. So you won't need to go out and spend a bunch of money in um, supplies. And these are supplies that you will need for the future of, of sewing or quilting. You know, I'm gonna, I'm gonna tell you the bare minimum. So you need the six by 24 inch ruler and then you also need a rotary cutter. So I will have this linked as well, not very expensive. Um, you need this if you're gonna do any sort of sewing or quilting, so it's a good investment to have. You haven't needed to use it so far in your first quilt project because we use the pre-cuts, but this is the method that you're gonna be doing to cut. And I'm gonna go over really briefly cutting for when we get our binding ready. So the first thing we're going to do is trim the quilt. And the main thing that I want you to keep in mind is that on our corners, we need to have a 90 degree angle because we want our quilt to be square. So if there was any sort of discrepancies that happened along the edges when you were quilting or when you were piecing it together, that all needs to be trimmed and ready to be bound. And we don't want like an off kilter quilt. So that's why we're gonna do it in this method. And this is the same methodology that you would use for a larger quilt. You basically just need to make sure you've got a 90 degree angle. So I've got my cutting mat underneath here, which I also recommend that you get, if you don't have one already, that sort of goes hand in hand with the rotary cutter. That way you can cut and it's not gonna damage your table. So I'm going to lay my ruler so that I use the 90 degree angle that's on the ruler as my guide. So that's gonna give me, this one's actually six and a half by 24. This one's slightly wider than the other one. Um, but it's gonna give me a good idea of how this will look. But I wanna show you, I'm gonna show you up close that I want you to trust your ruler as much as possible versus trusting your sewing. Because some of the pre-cuts were maybe a little bit larger, a little bit smaller, and I'm going to show you what I mean. So you can see here some of the pieces are coming out a little bit further. Some of them might go in slightly. Okay, but we're going to use our ruler and use that as our guide to trim. Now keep in mind, when we attach our binding onto the quilt, which will be in the next video. I'm not going to go, that's too much for one video. Um, but when we attach it, we're going to be coming in about three eighths of an inch or about just slightly over a quarter inch. So we can see this is the quarter inch line. So it's going to be right kind of on the other side of that line as we sew our binding on. So if you have any problems with the edge of your quilt, if it's coming in more than this line like this, you've got to trim more off of your quilt because you need to have enough for your binding to grab onto and we don't want any of the batting showing. So sometimes that happens, it's not a big deal if you end up having to trim off more of your quilt than you anticipate because of a little wonkiness that happened, totally okay. Once you have your ruler lined up here, you can trim it. So when you use my rotary cutter, I'm gonna get a nice firm grip on my ruler. Make sure you're on top of your cutting mat. I have done that before where I accidentally cut on my table because I couldn't see it, so just double check that. So 
So by doing it this way, we know now that we have a 90 degree angle. We're making sure that it's nice and square. It's not gonna end up being goofy when we're done with all of our trimming. So we know now we can trust this corner, which is really key. So we can slide it down. We're gonna go on this side and we're gonna put our, we're gonna line it up the same way, but we're also going and using this side and this side, we're also gonna use this line over here that we cut and line this up because that is our trustworthy cut that we made. And then we know that we're gonna be going from one 90 degree angle to the other 90 degree angle over here. Okay, so remember we're looking over here, we're over here and over here. And you can even see that I've got a little bit that kind of came out here on the side, but I need to also keep in mind this white square. So keeping all of those things in mind, make sure you've got that lined up and then you can cut. All right, so see that? Okay, now we're gonna take those principles and we're gonna take them to all of the other areas of our quilts. If you have one side of your quilt that ends up being longer than your ruler, you know, if you're translating this to a larger quilt, do your corners first and then you can connect here because then once you have your corners all set then you can line up the cut sides with your ruler and cut in the middle of those longer sides okay so corners first because that's where we're going to really be able to get our 90 degree angle so you can see here we've got this um, piece that's still connected but i can trust this line and i can trust this line and so we can line those cuts up with our ruler. So there you have it. Now I think you've, you've got the hang of it. So go ahead and finish up with the rest of your quilt, get that all trimmed off. Then I will meet you back and we will talk about how to measure for how large you need for your binding in case you made a slightly different size. So we're gonna figure out our binding and I'm gonna show you how to make the binding. And in the next video, we're gonna actually attach the binding. All right, everybody, let's go over the math on how you figure out how much binding fabric you need to buy. So whether you made the exact size quilt that I made or you're making a different size later on, this is how you figure out how much fabric you need. So we are gonna to need to measure all four sides of the quilt. So mine measure 21 and 21, 26 plus 26. So that's all four sides, which equals 94 then we need to add 10 inches to the 94. And that is for those corners, your seam allowance, some overlap at the end so you have wiggle room to attach it. So that's what that 10 is for. So you have a total of 104. Then we have 104 divided by 42, or whatever your width of fabric is. Um, I'm gonna go over a fat quarter in just a second, but if you're gonna use some yardage, you need to have, it's 42 inches, usually, Cotton yardage is 44 inches wide, but I go a little bit shorter just in case and use the number 42. That number is 2.4. So we need to actually round that up to three because it's hard to cut 2.4 strips of fabric. <laughs> so we're gonna go ahead and round up to three. And then that three is the amount of strips that you will need that measure 42 inches. So I measure my binding strips two and a half inches wide. So two and a half times three is seven and a half. And that means you need seven and a half inches of that yardage in order to get this number. So that's how you figure it out. <laughs> Hopefully you, you followed along with that. Um, I will have all of that on the blog post if you need to kind of refer to that again later. But I also wanna talk about fat quarters because this is a fairly small quilt. So I don't want you to go out and have to buy a, a bunch of fabric that you, you, know, you won't end up needing to use. So I happen to have some uh, fat quarters of this line of fabric and so i want to go over this really quick with you to show you how you can use just one fat quarter for your binding on this guy so a fat quarter measures 21 on the longer side by 18. okay so if you want to you can use one fat quarter and that will get you enough for this quilt you're going to need to use 12 and a half inches of the 18 inch side so you'll do, you'll do, you'll cut two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, two and a half, all the way down. And so instead of dividing by 
42, which is the width of fabric, you would divide by 21, which is your width of fabric on your longest side on a fat quarter. And then that would get you some different numbers. So that's what I'm gonna do. And I'm actually gonna use a, this dark purple. If that was confusing for you, let me know in the comment section and check the blog post and kind of work your way through it. But right now I'm gonna move on to how we're gonna cut those strips, make sure they're nice and straight. So this is a fat quarter. I pressed it just really quickly and I'm gonna fold it in half, okay? So the first thing that we wanna do is have a nice clean cut on the one side. And I'm gonna be using my long ruler that I use to trim. And we need to keep in mind those 90 degree angles, okay? So we have a 90 degree angle going across here, here. So this is the, the markings that we're looking for. So you can see here, we wanna make sure that this line is going straight across on that bottom part of our fabric. And you take a look at that going all the way across. And then once we cut along the right hand side of our ruler. I'm right handed, if you're left handed, this would be opposite. But then we know that it's a 90 degree angle and that strip is gonna be straight. So then what we do is get a nice clean cut. Doesn't need to be much, just making sure that it's nice and straight. And then what we're gonna do is flip it. So now we're gonna use this straight cut that we can trust. And we're gonna use that with our ruler. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna use this line as the outer part of the two and a half. Okay, so you can see here, I have a half, and it depends on whatever ruler. Just make sure you know where your markings are. So I've got one, two and a half, and I've got a two and a half inch uh, little marking here that I can refer to check that it's going all the way across on that fold and then that the two and a half inch mark is going all the way up the side and we want to have this line the two and a half inch line we want it to be on top of the fabric not outside the fabric on top of the mat here's that two and a half inch line you can see the line is on top of the fabric right on the edge you can see here and then the line going all the way across so once you have that all lined up we can cut it now once you cut it, don't move the fabric. Okay, just lift up your ruler, take the cut piece and set that aside, and then lay it right back down and make your next cut. So cut all of your strips, and then I'm gonna show you how to join them together at the sewing machine, which is just gonna be super simple. Um, and then you'll have your binding pretty much ready to attach to your quilt for the next video. We've got all of the strips cut, but remember on these fabrics, most of the time there is a selvage, and we don't wanna sew with that, okay? So we need to trim that off. So we're gonna just use this, the exact same principles, line up along the side and trim that guy off. And do that for all of your strips. Okay, so now that everything is trimmed, we need to sew them together to make one long strip. So that means we're gonna be sewing end to end, like that. I'm gonna be showing you how to do straight grain hand binding. So there's lots of different binding methods, but this is my favorite for beginners. And all we're gonna do is take this over to the sewing machine and a half inch, or I'm sorry, a quarter inch seam allowance and just sew one straight line. So we'll take this right sides together so quarter of an inch and then at your next short side grab your next strip and sew that okay so we're going to sew all of our strips together so we have one long strip so you guys know how to do that now so go ahead and do that and then i'll meet you at the ironing board for our last step okay so we've got our long strip here everything is sewn together And so the last step for this video is that we need to iron it, all right? And so when we iron it, let's see, there's my quarter inch seam allowance. And when we iron it, we're gonna iron it open. So we're gonna spread out that seam allowance so there's not a lot of bulk on one side or the other. We're gonna iron that flat. And then we're gonna bring that in and we're gonna iron it wrong sides together so that we have a strip that will be like this, all nice and pressed, 
and ready to be attached to the quilt. So do that all the way down for the entire strip. And then we are ready to attach it to the quilt. So that completes this video. I hope that that was easy for you to follow. If you need to watch this a few times, that's totally okay. And check the blog post. Everything will be written out for you. So if you find that the information sinks into your brain a little bit better when you kind of read it and watch it, because especially I know some of this is new, new subjects and kind of new things that you're learning, definitely be sure to do that. Finish up that binding and in the next video will be the final video and I'm gonna show you how to put this on your quilts. Happy sewing!